and uh, he, we didn't get done till half past midnight so he's uh, not had too long to go and get himself sorted whereas Chris was done and dusted by about half past seven last night Eight ball has just dropped in so it will be re-spotted Chris did make another ball cut break to start for Chris yeah keep an eye on that he played Christy Caulfield on this table and that's the match he lost in the winners qualification stage and he broke brilliantly and as, as did Christy as in they both left beautiful splits off every single frame it's just he had a couple inconsistent ones a couple dry and that was the reason he lost the match really I mean probably two mistakes apiece on either side it was one of the most incredible matches you'll see 18 frames in, in less than 40 minutes but uh, I think that's part of the reason why he's probably come in with a cut break this morning. He, he knows he can't afford to have that sort of inconsistency and break well. Yeah, but this is the well, this is part of that reasoning. But it is also a negative as well. This split is is not particularly nice. There's problems everywhere you look, and so much so, Chris doesn't want anything to do with it just yet can't blame him and you know it's a tough layout when Chris Manning wants nothing to do with it who do you feel's had the the raw end here Tom Cousins has done what he's meant to do he's the number one seed he's come through largely plain sailing he was pushed in places especially in the first round against Darren Hope but his reward for coming through unscathed is <laughs> the number two ranked player in, in Chris Manning Yeah, it, it's Tom for sure. I mean, Chris has had a bit of a... They, they've both had a, a, a raw deal to get, draw each other here in the quarterfinal. But, yeah, Tom's the one who's not had a defeat yet. So you've got to feel a little bit more sympathy for, for TC. So I had a great win over Sean Story late last night in the last 16. Chris Milling with a 10-9 win over Dave McNamara. Yeah, I watched that game. You were on commentary here on the main table, and I went out and watched the the Merling McNamara match. It was it did draw a little bit of a crowd towards the end. David McNamara had chances to win a couple of really good ones, especially at ten eight at, at nine eight rather. Had a counter clearance to win the match, didn't make it, and reverse clearance from Chris Merling in the deciding frame. Probably doesn't quite tell the full story because it was a match where Chris was pretty much clinging on. And his first words afterwards when I spoke to him was, got away with one. like Chris has had enough here of the tactical play and actually he's not not bad really it's not easy but you can make a better case for the reds he, this is dead straight he needs to get back to the right hand side of these yellows mm, not quite far enough he could have done with just avoiding the yellow and going to the other side of it Oh, he had just enough angle to try and force into the yellows, but only just had to really create an angle, really, from hampered queuing. But that was excellent. That is not, though. That was a delicate one. It's got away from him. there to be many mistakes in this match between Tom Cousins and Chris Melling. 
many missed chances. And with that being said, you just wonder how important that this first frame I always feel harsh calling it a mistake, but wasted opportunity for Chris Melling might be. It's a tough finish. It was. He'd done a lot, a lot of the hard work, though. Just needed to make that delicate pop. Expect him to make the one down the cushion. Of course, no guarantees, but yeah, he'd done the trickiest part was just connecting them together. A nice, easy chance in the end for Tom. Tom Cousins punches in the eight ball for a one frame lead. TC back on the break then as we get back underway in this match. If you are just joining us this morning, top of the morning to you. Happy Sunday. You've missed not much in truth. Uh, just a short delay there after the first frame. We're a technical gremlin that needed ironing out. But we are back underway and in that first frame, Chris Melling hit a cut break with a really smelly leave. Bit of tippy-tappy, tippy-tappy, followed by Chris Melling pushing the boat out, doing the hard work, missing a red, and Tom Cousins sweeping up. Extension cold. We're going to see the, uh, the lefty come out. Not often you see this. I saw it for the first time from Chris yesterday, actually, and he snookered himself and it cost him a frame. <laughs> I've, I've only ever seen, that's the second time, second shot I've ever seen him play doing it, actually. Yeah, he's giving himself some more angles, why not? In off the break from Tom Cousins is always a recipe for disaster against a player as good as Chris. And Chris will gently go about his business at the top of the table. It looks sort of congested, but a player like Chris is always going to back himself to pick it apart. And he's only really had to play one nudge, and that was only out of choice. Didn't have to. But he looks in ship shape, the magician. Two frames on the trot. He's put himself in trouble at the back end. Very surprised by this one. The two matches he's played on the TV table so far, he's really struggled with the cushions. He's openly talked about that. And uh, maybe another sign of it here. What's he got for us? Oh, no way. Oh, that's some effort. That's some effort. <laughs> Didn't think he'd get anywhere near this. Great attempt from Chris Melling, but he's going to find himself 2-0 down very quickly. Very similar to the opening frame here for Tom. Comes to the table with a wide open counter. Well, his turn to be a... Well, no, he was, I was thinking he was playing on the one on top cushion, but it looks like he's playing on the one left centre. Yeah. Makes a little bit more sense. I thought he'd deal with the top cushion, then play this one, but... This works nicely. I just wonder if there's an element with that. Chris shot very, very quickly down on the red. Did just did just give a little hint to me of a of a little bit of a lack of concentration on it. Yeah, possibly. Uh, he's, he he can do that though. He's uh, not the lack of concentration, but that kind of he essentially had won the frame three, four shots before it in his own mind, and maybe just switched off a fraction going through the motions. Two 
Is that red going to drop? No, it isn't. Chris disappointed because he's got a good split on this break. And he had very much fancied going at these. Chris will play around with his break more than some of the other top players. Certainly for Tom, he, he will go to the crack break, Tom, but it, it's less likely, although it has been happening this weekend on the outer tables. But Chris is openly against the cut break, but he will use it from time to time. But I always think he's at his best when he's front wall breaking. One of the reds will squeeze in past the yellow to the top right, I believe. Kind of opens up the other red. You can just see it there at the corner of the shot. Does the rebel on, red on the left-hand side double? If not, if he gets right behind it, last ball. Drop it in, eight ball would be waiting. Not guaranteed to get nicely on it, though. Yeah, the getting nicely on it is the most important thing. Well, the line's pretty good here. He can just drop it on, I believe, but he's a lot further away from this being a comfortable shot. This is far from easy. It looks easy there. It's not. These are horrible little shots. Made to look easy. Yeah. Tom Cousins does do that. And this to complete a, a rapid start. 3-0 Tom Cousins and two of them off the Chris Melling break. It's a, it's very early. Race to 10 still, remember, in the British Open. But it might just be another frame on the board for Chris Melling. That's what he'll be worried about. Tom Cousins has the next break at 3-0. Oh, is that break warming up? He's not hitting full power. We saw him last night in the last 16 match. First break of the, the match, he hit, it, <laughs> he hit it absolute full power and the cue ball landed about 20 foot away from the arena. I was, I was in the vicinity of that first break and it was quite late at night. You know, just in my last game on commentary. And when that break got hit, it was like a gun had gone off in the arena. I genuinely jumped, <laughs> fully startled. I turned around to see a cue ball flying around. It was uh, it was an explosive break from Tom Cousins. But that one you just saw right there was was easy power, wasn't it? It was a uh, yeah, ra just rather than a rocket. It was a uh, it was a smooth Rolls Royce. And it was exactly what Chris Day said on commentary when when that first break happened. He said. Tom will pull this back a little bit from here. You know, he's jumped it off the table. Too much power. He doesn't need that much power. I think he hit the second break with close to maximum and hit them everywhere but couldn't find a ball and then just eased it back. Trying to On this table with perfect conditions, you just don't need full power, especially when you've got two guys out there in, in Chris and Tom that have extreme power, all the capabilities. I mean, we're very rare do we ever see Chris break with full power. And Tom's in the same boat right now. Key shot here. And it has gone wrong. 
Yeah, I think he had quite a bit going on with that shot. Yellow off red and into the cannon as well. Kind of really focusing on two sides of the shot. Trying to open up the yellow, trying to open up the eight ball. First mistake in the match for Tom. Hasn't left an easy return for Chris. Yeah, frustration for Chris. But let's have another watch of this. Yeah, so looking for it off the red with the cannon as well. That's It's high tariff. And he got both ends of the shot wrong as well. Missed the pot, missed the cannon, or grazed the cannon. I just wonder, so was that always plan A, do you think? Or was he slightly... He didn't quite have enough angle that he wanted on the on the shot to almost sort of play it plain ball, if you like. No, he had to. Matters worse, he, he wanted to open up the eight ball at the same time as opening up the the yellow. So he there was two areas to deal with, and it was always the plan. Well, what's the plan now, TC? Pull back and wait for another opportunity. I would suggest. I wonder if the the red yellow are a plan. So could he play this and screw into the red, pop the yellow over in? Don't know if he tried to or not. Probably did. One good shot here and actually gives Chris a decent enough chance. It looks really horrible and it is. And it's, I'm only saying this because Chris is obviously one of the, the greats of the game. But great first shot which had a little bit of help with the yellow always would have done. He's got the red on the right hand side that he can play off the yellow to open up the red at the bottom of the table. And when you look at that, you're thinking it's only really the the eight ball that doesn't have a pocket. Oh, I thought it to be on this red down the rail next. He's overplayed that by six inches. But he, he does, but he wanted to. He did want an angle. He but did want a little bit of an angle. Not this much, I wouldn't suggest. Oh, he's tried to deal with the eight ball. It's very similar to the thinking of Tom previously, trying to deal with the eight ball at the same time as dealing with the bottom right-hand corner. And, and this time he's got half the shot right. But the problem, the reason he's scratching his head, he's too straight. I just have to run through for the red of the rail here. Yeah. yeah, that's all he had. What's he going to have for the eight ball then? Because that red near the left centre, you can't do too much with. So... Where's he going to go with the eight ball? He's played that one beautifully. If it lands absolutely on the cushion, he can float down for the double easily enough. I'm not sure if he can get there from this angle. Or he could, he could get underneath it, so he's going to take it up the table. I don't, the yellow doesn't really make it a big pocket. But because there's a gap between the, he can hit the gap between the pocket and the, the yellow, but he can miss this by wide and go off the yellow. But he'll try and make it straight, I believe. Yeah, that won't go. That's the gap. Yeah, he, he wanted to take the pocket as well. He'll be disappointed with that. He, he's played it in such a way there that he's really trying, I think, to, to take the pocket at absolute worst. But it gives it also what happens there, it gives it every opportunity for it to drop in. It can slide in off that near jaw. And as you say, he, he has serious equity in the frame if he leaves it sitting right over the pocket, but couldn't have finished too much worse for him really. It's another gift of a frame here for Tom Cousins. Interestingly there, head-to-head -head record, I know it's only four games and one of those was a Champions League night, it's only a race to four. It doesn't take much for a shot like that to go wrong. It's, it's the, the only back on the front ball, ball and he's topped into the middle pocket. Wow. I was just going to make the point that it's the only time that putting a ball over a pocket really gives you any equity in the frame is the, is the eight ball in that situation, but... Oh, the disaster continues here for Chris. To the two reds plant past the yellow. If they do, I, I quite so. like reds. I think so. He's looking at the yellows. Looks like he's going to go yellows. 
And I think if those two reds plant, I like the plant. Yeah. No, he is going. He is going red. He's just playing the plant, making sure the red doesn't go behind the yellow. Red ball's in play. I actually wondered if he played it. I didn't think he needed to sort of squeeze it. I thought if he played it straight, it was going, and the the red would stay where the other red was, and as long as it was still going to pass the yellow. But obviously, he felt that it was going away and could get tied up by the yellow, so tried to play it with more pace. It, it's come out okay, not perfect, but the two reds still go, so we'll be happy enough. Probably use one red that's most in the open in the middle of the table. Wants the angle to track the top of the table and leave the other red near left centre as your eight ball. Might have a little bit too much angle here to play the shot he wants. Yeah. where he wants to be here. <coughs> it's not what he wanted to do originally. He could see he wasn't happy with where he landed two shots ago and he's still trying to recover that situation. Yeah. Judge that one well, to be fair. Knew he was going into it. He'll be happy with the angle he's been left. Knocking on the door of 5 0. That one wobbled, but in it goes, and he's nicely onto the eight ball. Lovely. Well, we have played. 20 minutes. Tom's just made the one error in the match and it's not cost him. <laughs> and I still love TC's mannerisms around the table. He, he really does just play like he hasn't got a care in the world. And we know from spending a lot of time with him that simply isn't true, but his, his mannerisms are, are very distinguishable he's looking at red tip for a chance for a 6-0 lead and it, obviously if we were playing on the pro series and it was a race to seven six nil even for as good as chris is 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 just game over but even with a race to ten six nil is starting to look very very worrying the problem he's got is he playing tom cousins and at six nil you're three breaks behind and chris could play flawless from this moment on and may not get enough chances to win it's as simple as that it's, Tom's too far in front now and you're going to need a lot of help from from Tom for Chris to get back into this one even if it is a race to 10 we have seen some pretty bonkers comebacks this weekend Scott Gillespie who we'll see in the quarterfinals later on this afternoon came back from 9-2 down against Lewis Roberts to win 10-9 Probably the standout one. Just an astonishing ro result from Goobsy there. So, you know, it is possible, but you do need that little bit of, of help. And usually it has to come in the form of dry breaks because the level is too good to expect players to continually fail and fail and fail to take chances. But you need something. The issue is when you're relying on failed Tom Cousins breaks, you, well, you're always up against it because it just doesn't seem to happen very often. TC is going to stroll into a 6-0 lead. Yeah, the point you make there is so valid. But yes, that was a eye-catching result. Obviously, Scott winning from 9-2 behind. 
He gets a nice few hours to go and sort himself out. First man into the semis, he can prepare. Have plenty of time. Well, not guaranteed to be in those semis though. Chris makes the ball, gets himself a chance. Stops in his tracks because he thought this was going to be a really good chance. and mm. It is, but he does have one problem if he takes the reds on the right hand side. That's what he's trying to work out right now. Don't think he'll consider the yellows. I mean, they look so tied up on the right hand side, but it, it could only be one shot to open them up. And I don't, yeah, he's definitely not taking them. So it's just a case of when does he try and deal with that red on the right? He won't be happy with that first shot. Gonna be even less happy with the second shot. A little bit of scoreboard pressure, you feel, has just come on to Chris Melling. Rare you see reaction from him, and obviously he did react to the layout he had off the break. Yeah. And normally, you know, nil nil or three three or whatever the scoreline might be when it's you know, he's mid match, it he'd be just thinking, Okay, yeah. He sees solutions but Right there, you can almost see saw the problems. Tom was hoping to be on the bottom yellow here. If, he, if he's on the bottom yellow, he can open everything up on one shot. This time, cue ball's going into the yellow. Where is it going to contact? Is it going to split up the table? Mm, didn't quite come out for him. Got the double kiss. It's not end of visit though. No, he's still okay. He's got another opportunity to break it out if he wants to. Or he could leave it as a double, but he's got options here. You can see the one to left middle. One to right middle is a natural connector into the yellow that's causing him the grief. This has to be judged well if he's cannoning it. And he will be. Stands between him and 7 0. Nice. Perfect. Very nice. Perfect. Oh, do not adjust your sets. Tom Cousins, 7. Chris Melling, 0. It could be a little bit different as well as Tom Rifle's break. That's the best one he's hit in the match. But it'd be different as well if, say, Chris hadn't had opportunities and Tom had just run racks on him off dry breaks and Chris had barely had a look in and found himself 7-0 down. Chris has had plenty of chances in this match and almost hasn't got himself into that rhythm. And it makes a comeback in that sense even though in theory it's possible, even more unlikely. Is that Slightly delicate drop in here. Yellows are okay. decided to deal with the ones at the bottom first. I'd be surprised if he leaves the one over bottom right. 
as last ball. Just doesn't want to go through the traffic of the Reds. But he could do. Yeah, if the Reds weren't there, it's almost your natural final ball, isn't it? will be now he's got a nice angle maybe a, a shade too much angle he wanted to just be able to hold and get roughly straight in on the one down the cushion yeah I think he still can I think might be just trying to pinch this a little bit put it on the straight side of the pocket yeah he just has that turn half a turn more than he wanted yeah, there you can see right in the straight side of the pocket. And even then, look how far he's come. Yeah, he had too much angle, too hold, so he's going to leave the one up the cushion his last ball. Won't have to do anything with it, even if he lands straight. I mean, he doesn't want to be straight. He'd love to have just a few turns of angle. And he's not going to. And Tom, in his own words, doesn't like these shots. <laughs> he feels that he's not the best at down the cushions. I don't think anyone likes these shots. And Tom Cousins continues in his dislike. Yeah. I mean, it was it's a tough shot. I mean, it, it's just he says he's not very good down the cushions, which is obviously a relative term, but he probably compares himself to some of the other top players. And You're absolutely right in what you say. No one likes them. It's just some of the players give you the impression they're the easiest things in the world when they're not. Well, if it is to happen for Chris, it does need to start right now. A little chink in the Tom Cousins' armour. Yeah, he's going to elect to pot the yellow. Only risk with that is he's not on his next ball. So it might just be a delicate little snooker here. It was the right shot from Chris. He's landed as bad as he possibly could. To not be on a ball here is very unlucky. Oh. <laughs> How'd you like that? 7 0 down. That's naughty. That's naughty. <laughs> well, he's made a ball. I'll tell you what, these haven't come out badly, you know. He's actually, he's actually okay. He got completely slug right there. You can see the, the balls didn't explode at all. So, annoying as it is, these are actually all right. This is a nice, this is one of the nicest splits we've had in the entire match in a funny way. Certainly off the Chris Melling break. It's not too bad for him, is it? One yellow maybe needs some work. Does the, or do both the yellows go? Oh, it might do. Oh, it does. He didn't really want to be hampered queuing, so he's having to go the other way. I think it's also the angle he was on it. Not ideal angle. You're about to see sort of Darth Melling here. Yeah. Because... He's going to go for everything. He's going to play at a million miles an hour. And it's going to be very, very entertaining for us to watch. You won't like him when he's angry. 7-2. Well, maybe... He didn't really drive the power through. Mm. Talk about this quite a bit. We get to see it with that replay. It sort of hits the front ball on a hop and doesn't explode. Obvious starters on yellows. The yellow and eight ball are a problem. Well, maybe not the eight ball. It's the yellow above it, actually. Eight ball would slide to the bottom right. 
Is the double available on the yellow at the bottom of the table? It's far from an easy chance, wherever it goes. So it looks like he's leaving an angle to try and fly into this, but going into it from high, and you've got three reds blocking, it's getting this out isn't far from guaranteed. I think he'll be happy. I think the yellow will go off the cushion off the red now. And he has a, a ball to be on next, but it's still far from easy. Could have come out a lot better, but I just think with that one, and you know when Chris is going into it with extreme pace, just trying to make something happen, you know that it's a, it's a tough one to be precise with, and it just needed power to try and reset the layout. I think you could have been a lot worse as well. shot yeah fantastic I actually think he might have hit this too well can he be is he on the yellow to left center yeah I think so oh I see so he he's thinking he, the yellow nearest the reds awkward to play off the cushion off the red whereas this one is easier to do it with that's his thinking here clever oh he feathered it he didn't move it far enough I just needed just the tiniest bit more Oh, the margins are so small, aren't they? The margins are so small. He still squeezed this in. It he went clean. Could. It <laughs> went clean. <laughs> Touch of the Phil Harrisons there from Chris May. <laughs> oh, what a finish this is. Well, where's the eight ball going? Oh, it's ridiculous. It was there as well. He actually overcut that a fraction. That was on the thin jaw. That was one of the most amazing efforts at making a clearance. It really was. There were some high-class shots in that chance. And actually, he's put Tom under a bit of pressure here. Yeah, first shot's not easy. Yeah, Tom's just going to have to stand up and make a really tricky pot in the centre. There's no... No point in playing the hiding shot at the top of the table, it's just as tough. Good shot. Very good shot. this gone awkward I think he's okay I think he can still see it left centre and if he can see it might even be able to play nicely on the one at the top now decides just to drop it in touch thinner than it looked first shot for Tom first shot was good nice pot second and then pretty much guaranteed thereafter there was some effort from Chris Melling but ultimately it's going to cost him the frame eight to Tom Cousins oh it may be all she wrote that could be Chris Manning's last shot. His expression will tell you he thinks it probably is. That's the level we're at. Good break, no friends. 
decent split for Tom Cousins. And Tom Cousins with the next break, potentially on the hill. It could be the farewell for the magician. straight on this one he's not going to get too far down the table maybe just accepting that and just wants to make sure he's on the next ball but I would have thought he would have wanted to get further down not easy if he just plays on the one over bottom right corner pocket to get nicely on the next ball and he's played a good shot to get beyond the break line that wasn't easy yeah he has just to hit the gap but more than that he can get himself online so he can play it a lot cleaner oh has he come far enough he's really close I don't think he's on it I don't think he's on it so Maybe we will see Chris get back to the table. Can he see enough to pot it top left? Looks like from the main camera, it looks like he, he can see some of it from the overhead. It, less certain. Could kick it. Oh, he's having to swerve. These are hard with the small cue ball. Yeah, in the end. He's just got a little bit too much swerve into it, and that is very, very, very easily done. They're so tough to judge. Well, not all over yet for Chris Melling. You wouldn't have been expecting to be back at the table, and yet here he is. turn on that one just wants to drop it in and, and land fairly straight on the yellow to left centre and then he's out but a, oh he killed it really well that was a lovely shot you know, we were having that conversation earlier about some people really don't like playing down the rails <laughs> I, I don't think Chris is really one of them genuinely don't think it even bothers him slightly With you. Just a ball to be potted. 8 3. Still a long way back. Wow. Hey, is, how's that dry? There was a ball that looked for certain to be dropped in the left centre and top right. Look at that yellow. Hello. Yeah. Right, this is where this is where the Chris Melling match play instinct needs to kick in. He needs to find a way to win this frame. He would love it to be in one visit, it's not guaranteed. Yellow at the top of the table is a problem. Don't think it passes the red. Yellow below the eight ball's a problem. Easier to solve. But 
he needs to be telling himself, if I can find a way to make sure that Tom Cousins doesn't play his next shot till he's only 8-5 in front, you're making him think about it at least. Don't think he can avoid the eight ball here. Yeah, so he's not even going to take it on. If he tried to pot that, cue ball goes into the eight ball. He's got no position and he still hasn't got the ability to deal with that one at the top. And I actually feel he maybe he almost played for that one. He dropped the one in the middle. Knew what he was doing. Maybe if he lands straighter on it, he might try and continue. Tom Cousins almost with a heck of a fluke. Yeah, I think the yellow still goes top right. There's plenty showing. So combination there. Chris has a great chance to win the frame. Just came a touch too far down the table on the first shot. So I had to judge that cannon and control well. Now needs to just get himself on the one at the top. And there is more room than it looks. One at the bottom was always going to be the last ball. Yeah, brilliant. Well, well, well. Eight four now. Chris Melling to break next. He's absolutely creamed that break. And Tom Cousins will be sat in his chair and he will already assume this is 8-5. Yeah, it's not absolutely certain. First couple of shots, he just needs to get himself in line, but these will go. In fact, he was a little bit straighter on that than I thought, so he was perfect actually from first shot. Chris doesn't have to rush here as well. He w I think he's aware of that. He's not absolutely flying around the table. Plenty of time in the match here. It's one thing that Chris Melling does benefit from is because he is generally such a quick player. Doesn't usually have to worry too much about the match clock troubling him come the end of the match. He does make them look so routine. For a player of Chris Melling's ability, they are. But you just got to remember that not everyone can do that. No. <laughs> it was a beautiful layout, though, for him. He was straight enough on the first ball that he was in line in one shot. And cool. There was a little bit extra wow. in that. And he sent it straight into the top pocket via the sun, I might suggest. Yeah. He put a little bit more power this time, didn't he? And now he'll be thinking, you know, he may not have been too stressed before the break, but if Chris could go back to back here, oh, 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 then we've got a game on our hands. We have got a game on our hands. This is, yeah, this is big. He's looking at reds. This is the only properly tricky red apart from the one at the bottom of the table yeah I'm really just surprised he's not going yellows I don't really see the the issue with the yellows really yellow balls in play. yeah me too he is going to go yellows I didn't know whether the red at the bottom didn't pass the eight ball or not but just just saw yellows instantly yeah yellows always look like the ball there it looks like Chris has ducked himself into it I suppose this is the first shot of the three, but just a little bit tied up. Yeah, he gets across onto this one. It's it's going to be the plant because the, the yellow doesn't, the top yellow there, if he played the other one, doesn't go right centre. It would have been tricky to land on the next ball. So it was just these three was probably his thinking, but they're not too tricky for him. Well, especially if this goes past the eight ball. 
which it just does. Just charge that well. Well, well, well. Strap in. Chris Melling was 7-0 down what felt like five minutes ago. And it's 8-6 and the Melling break to come. And all of a sudden, the magician is locked right in. Because I think that just showed a glimpse that Tom was hearing Chris's footsteps behind him. Oh, it's the best break Chris has hit and it's going to be dry. Oh, he's sick. You can't hit them better than this. That's exactly what he tries to do. That, that little bit of topspin comes back and parks the cue ball. And for all the good work, we're back to the situation where Chris may have played his last shot in the match, in the tournament. Yeah, it's a cruel game at times. So easy to sit here and say, oh, every ball's got a pocket, should be simple. It's not absolutely certain here. He's just taking his time to work it out. I wonder one if he's going to land on the bottom, the furthest bottom red here. Well, that's uh, the one he wants to get to. That's yeah. the one that's the tricky one. You've got the two in the left centre as good connections to them. It's just the order he wants to take these out. Maybe we'll even have to leave it till last ball. Last or last but one. Yeah. Depends on how he sees it. Do you try and get the angle to come down for it on the next red into left centre, or do you try and do both reds in the centre and then come down? I mean, there's plenty of room for it, to be honest with you. Goes there now. Hmm. Not ideal. Depends on the angle. If he can just come back and get past the straight. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, I didn't think he could it, see that. It's absolutely perfect. I thought he just had the outside ready. He could just sneak by the eight ball. That's fine, actually. Yeah, I retract my hmms, Thomas. Yeah. I mean, it was ball in hand perfect. In yeah, it was, yeah. Which actually makes his decision to sort of come down. He had such a big margin of error. If he gets under one at the bottom, he's fine. If he comes up just short, he's also fine. Lovely. Tom Cousins finds a response and goes on the hill. He was 7 0 up. He then lost six of the next seven frames. Tom doesn't know what to do on the break. Here we go. The biggest break in the game is cut breaking. No, no, he can't bring himself it. to do it. Can't bring himself <laughs> to do it. <laughs> oh, that dreams a break straight down the middle. Yeah. Why would you have a cut break when you can break like that? I mean, it wouldn't even be in my thought process yeah. if I could do that. What a decision. What a decision. If I could do that off the break, I'd be hugely in the camp ban the cut break just because it would be such oh. a big advantage. Not everyone can do what he's just done. Absolute dream of a break, and yep. that without wanting to pot them for him, this should be the match. Great opportunity. This was the hardest ball, and he's landed on it perfectly. short here I think he can just grip it and avoid the red yeah it's a he would love to have gone an extra three four rolls across the table oh he could grip it comfortably oh 
from our super match. We were worried at one stage it may well be a procession. For credit to Chris Melling for making it competitive. But Tom Cousins gets over the line. He flew into a 7-0 lead. Chris Melling then pegged him back some. But Tom Cousins got the job done at the end of the match to win through 10-6 and take his place as the first British Open semi-finalist.